Hello friends. Today I have compiled a whole video of my past Christmas DIYs for you to enjoy. So here you go. Okay, the first thrift flip came from a garage sale. I had been to a garage sale um, out of state actually. We went to a family reunion and we went to this garage sale with my sister-in-law and I got almost all of these things I think at that garage sale. So I am just kind of measuring what's going to fit inside that little frame that I got for 50 cents. I mean, it's super cute like it is, but it, I'm going to make a Christmas DIY, a Christmas decor piece out of it. And I'm just going to make some triangles, two identical size triangles. And of course, I'm like trying to figure out how I'm going to do it exactly the same. But I take my rotary cutter. Okay, this little piece of cardboard is that cardboard that comes in the Dollar Tree calendars. If you don't have it, then just use any kind of cardboard, thin cardboard, thick cardboard, whatever you like. You could just use some heavy cardstock as well. So I'm just making two identical long triangles and you can see how I measured them out. And then I picked two lovely pieces of scrapbook paper that I liked. I thought they coordinated well, but they weren't too matchy-matchy. This is going to be very rustic and very minimalistic and very easy to do with just very few um, what do you call them items supplies okay so then I cut out two little squares that we're going to use for our trunk I'm just using regular old school glue stick and I'm gonna glue my paper on top now I'll take my little squeegee and I like to do this when I use this glue stick because it smushes it, you like my vocabulary, smushes it down in there and smooths it out. I did that to both trees. And now I'm going to take this dark wax from DIY. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Sammy, over at Unicorn Dust Designs. My sweet, sweet friend for turning me on to DIY waxes. They are amazing. And I love this dark one because it looks like a stain. And you can wipe it off or leave it on. So I, I painted that little, those little cardboard tree stumps. And then now I'm, I'm just brushing a little bit on this frame because it was a little bit golden and a little bit light. Okay, now to cover up that five, I'm not gonna paint it. I'm just gonna put some paper on it. I have this burlap cardstock I got at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. It has paper on the back and burlap on the front. And you've probably seen me use it in DIYs before. Or you could just use any scrapbook paper of your choice. I was going between these two. I couldn't decide if I wanted to use that that looked like wood grain or the burlap, and I chose the burlap. So also, I decided when I cut it, if for some reason it doesn't go all the way to the edge, because, oh boy, it's a struggle for me with measurements. But anyway, so I decided to take this furniture marker from Dollar Tree and just color around the edges so that if that didn't go all the way to the edge, no one would be the wiser except you all. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of hot glue on each corner. Well, I guess I'm going to make sure it fits first. Okay, good enough. I used my little Cricut tool to dig it out of there. I guess I didn't show you that I hot glued it. I just put four pieces, four little dots of hot glue on each corner and hot glued it in there. And now I'm Mod Podging, putting Mod Podge on the tops of all of those to seal it. Now. I'm going to just put these little wood pieces, these little wooden, I call them wooden nickels. They're just little wooden circles. I don't even remember where I got them. Probably a big bag from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or somewhere like that. And I'm sure I didn't pay full price because I never pay full price for anything. Now, you can see that I'm just, and the reason that I glued that on there is I wanted it to be a little more dimensional. That's totally optional. I also took a little bit of that dark wax and did it just around the edges of this burlap. You can kind of see that it looks like a little bit of a shadow. Um, you can totally see what I'm doing here. Just using those little wooden circles. I'm still calling them wooden nickels. I'm using those little wooden circles to elevate the tree part and then I'm just sliding that little tree stump, tree trunk up underneath there. Now, I got out all the different kinds of twine that I had and decided on red, natural, and the tan and, um, it's not really white, it's more of an off-white or just a natural white. 
and then I'm just going to make a simple bow with a lot of little loops. I think you can see how to do that, and then I just hot glued it up in the corner. Easy peasy. You can hang it or it's really thick and you can set it. Oh yeah, I had these little tiny stars I got off Amazon. I got like three or four or five hundred of them. I can't even remember. They're all different sizes. I think this is the, I don't know if this is the biggest one or not, but anyway. This is a new technique I love too. Dry brush the wax on and then dry brush your color on top. It's so pretty. I glue that on top of the trees and now it's done. You'll have to let me know what you think about this. I think it's just so simple and I love it. Ta-da! Okay, next thrift flip. This was also at that garage sale for one dollar. Would you look at that? I loved this. The it came from Hobby Lobby and it was originally seventeen ninety nine. And those stickers peeled off really easy, so I'm thinking she had had it for a while. Now the back side had some really deep grooves in that wood, which made it have some really cool character. So I thought I would dry brush over it with some white and do something, and then I decided I was gonna flip it over and use the smooth side. So I gave it two good coats of white chalk paint. This is by Rust-Oleum, it's linen white. And I had this great idea, I was gonna make a, um, a decal with my Cricut. I got this design out of um, Cricut Design Space and it was really easy to cut, really easy to weed. And I'm putting it with my new, this is new Frisco transfer tape and I think it's the more sticky adhesive one. And I'm, I'm having buyer's regret on that. I, I think I didn't realize that's what I was buying. I thought I was buying the same thing I had purchased last time. And I could not get it to stick to this surface. I've never had a problem. I mean, occasionally you'll get some uh, vinyl that won't stick really good. And you just have to work with it a little bit. This, mm -mm, you see that? It is not sticking at all. So, just ripped it all off. Stuck it back on that sheet and now I'm gonna trace it we're going old school boys and girls so I just traced around every single bit of it it did not take that long even though I've got this really sped up I'm tracing on that and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna scribble just like we did in elementary school I'm gonna scribble on the back of it and then trace it onto that white um, I don't know what you call that cutting board or decorative piece so I'm just scribbling, scribbling, scribbling all over where, I've, where I have um, drawn those images. You can see it kind of came off on my other piece of paper too. And I'm going to take some painter's tape and tape it down so it doesn't move. And I'm going to just trace over it now. It's a little bit more work, but it is really pretty. So to keep up with what I've traced and what I haven't, I decided, okay, I'm going to do the little snowflake stars first. So I did all of them. I did all the little circles and the snowflakes. And I did those first. And then I did all these little leaves. And then I did all the little branches. And lastly, I did the word joy. So that way I could keep up with what I had written over and what I hadn't. I mean, you can kind of tell because it's darker because you've gone over it twice now. But that's how I kept up with it. And look, it looks great. So now I'm going to take a paint pen. I got these off of... Amazon but you can get them at Walmart and I'm just taking my black one this is so easy y'all this is so easy and so I just it's just like drawing so just coloring it in now then I color in the word joy I got my J a little skinnier than my Y in the end but I did go back over it and um, make the J a little bit thicker um, these pens, you do have to kind of pump the paint so it comes down. Now, doing the little awareness ribbon bow, where you just make the awareness ribbon, pinch it in the middle. I'm taking a little piece of the black and white Baker's Twine from Dollar Tree. Just going to wrap it around the middle a little bit tight, really tight, and you barely even see that. When you fluff the bow up, making sure both, both loops are the same height. Um, so you can't even see that in the middle, but I wouldn't even care if you could because it would be cute Because it's all black and white. The whole thing is black and white until I put the um, 
jute rope hanger on it. And this is wired, so it works really good to kind of put it where you want. Okay, dovetail the ends. Use my fray check on this ribbon. I got this ribbon at, I want to say I got it at Michael's after Christmas two years ago. It was a big spool. I think I paid $7 for this big old huge spool I've been using for two years. I still have tons of it left. So, I mean, it depends on what you're going to use it for, but, um, yeah, it's a good buy. So, I do this. I did run the lighter over that to get rid of all those little frayed spots, but I think it turned out so pretty. Okay, here's our next one. I got this at that same garage sale. She had three of these galvanized envelopes, and I paid $2 for all of them. And I cleaned this up really good um, with some rubbing alcohol. And now I'm going to use my Dixie Red, Dixie Bell Barn Red paint. This is the first time um, me using the Dixie Bell. No, this is my first time using this. I started to say flavor. Oh my goodness. This um, color, this Barn Red, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's a nice deep, dark um, farmhouse Christmas red. Now I'm going to take in this um, DIY dark wax that I love so much. And I'm just putting it around the edges because I just want it to look a little worn, like it's an old envelope, an old metal envelope. Then I decided to go crazy and do it on the back side just to give it, you know, like it has a little bit darker on that back part. And then I just put some all over it and then I got a little too much. So I used the white wax, the clear wax, the clear wax will kind of erase it if it's still um, wet. So I did let it dry completely and then go over the whole thing with the clear wax. In the end, I did uh, do a little bit of dark wax on the back. And I cut this little stencil out um, with my Cricut. I got this in Design Space as well. Now, this didn't work out as good as I had hoped it would. I don't know if it was because I had waxed it first. Um, Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Designs does lots of wood rounds. She does an amazing job. She is my inspiration. She's my hero. Um, I've probably been crafting longer than she's al been alive, but she, oh man, she is so talented. Anyway, she does stencils on after she has waxed and sealed and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Anyway, it, it turns out okay in the end, but it was a little bit extra work. Let's put a little Mod Podge on here to seal it so it doesn't bleed. It's a great idea if it just would have worked. No, it actually worked. It just didn't work as good as I had hoped it worked, but you'll see. Now I'm using some chalk and mineral paint that I got off the Brilliant Vinyl, I think that's what it's called, website, and it's called um, Starcraft, Starcraft Paint, and I like it real well. I didn't know if I would like it or not, but I do like it. Um, they had it on sale, and I was like, mm, why not try add it to my order, get free shipping, right? So I go back in, and I'm touching up with the two colors of paint, and I think it looks really good. Okay, this first thrift flip is this little plaque that came from, looks like, um, Goodwill or thrift store for $1.99 maybe. And I'm removing the pegs, and the little hangers and I remove all of them I don't show you all that on camera because that's boring and redundant and we've got better things to see but it was you know just a little screwdriver and yeah sometimes you just have to try a little harder and pull that hardware off and there it goes and this little cute little well it's cute and all that but it's not gonna go with what we're gonna do so I just used my heat tool heated it up and melted that glue and it had been on there for a while so it took a little bit of work to get it off and I was a f little bit afraid I was gonna um, ruin my little tool but I just kept working at it and working at it until it came right off then I used my heat tool some more on the little well and got out my screwdriver and I'm always afraid that I'm gonna be prying this up and it's gonna give way and I'm gonna hurt myself but I didn't and it all came off really easily now I'm going to take these little blue pegs and I'm just, I just rolled some tape and put it on there and I'm going to paint these like this. So, um, yeah, they were kind of difficult to paint, 
but I just took my time and got them painted in black ink by Waverly. Now I'm going to use some white chalk paint. This is Rust-Oleum Linen White. It's my go-to for everything. I did both sides. It's all nice and smooth and pretty. And I'm going to take this little uh, rub-on. That's what it is, a rub-on transfer. I'm finding the middle of it. and going to put it right in the middle of here. Look how pretty that looks on that white paint. I love it. So this one, um, I had to work at it a little bit to get it to come off. I'm not sure the rhyme or reason to why some of them come off really easy and some of them don't. But you can see, like, I had to work a little bit in some spots. Um, but otherwise, it came off easy. Sometimes different different um, tools work a little bit better. The popsicle sticks seem to work a little bit better for me on this one. But I just kept working it and working it. And then I just burnished it with the, the little transfer paper that um, I, it came off of. Now I have this black and white baker's twine that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to wrap it around a couple times around that part right there you can see then I'm just going to tie it in the back and I'm going to tie it in a little knot I'm going to put a little hot glue down there no I'm not I storied that's the, that's the next part hang with me oh I am going to put a little hot glue down there <laughs> I tricked you okay put a little hot glue down there Kind of arrange them how you want them. You can put a little hot glue in a couple other places if you want. Mine were, mine, I got mine on there pretty tight, so they were good. Then I'm going to put some bells on here. I had these red bells. I really, really wanted to use the red bells. But I thought they were too big for what I wanted to do. And I just didn't really like the red bells. I liked, I really wanted the red ones. But I ended up with these smaller silver ones. And I liked the size of them better. So I just strung them on some more of this baker's twine and you know you can put however many or little you want on there I just decided to put them like that and I'm going to tie a little knot in this put a little hot glue on there tie it down nice and tight I want to be sure that I get that one nice and tight use my little silicone spatula from Dollar Tree to mash it down get it down on there good and then arrange the jingle bells the way that I want them I wanted two together one and then two together one now I put a little bit of clear DIY wax on these because I want, if you hang an ornament or something from it, them not to get all scratched up. So I sealed them good. Then I'm going to use my little screwdriver and the screw that actually came with it and reattach all these little pegs. Um, that first one was super easy to do. The other two <laughs> kind of gave me a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble, but. It was a little bit difficult to do it on camera where I thought I needed you to watch me do it for some reason. I'm not sure why I included showing you how to do all three of these, but here you go. Here's how you do all three of them. Okay, there's the final reveal, and I think it turned out just beautiful. Okay, the next thrift flip is my favorite. I absolutely love this. I picked up some chairs from a lady who was actually giving them away and she had a whole flatbed trailer full of them and I picked five and did give her a little donation because um, I just did anyway so this one I'm not sure what happened to it if you've ever seen this happen to some wood let me know this wood was pretty soft but it was only on this side that this happened um, the, there's the little screw holes I'm pointing out to you. Um, I just love this little chair. I love the character. I love those little indentions in the, the little legs and the arms of it. I guess that's what you call it. I don't know what you call the parts of chairs. The little rungs down there. It's very lightweight. It's not a heavy chair. There's some more of that splintering of the wood. And I really didn't intend to totally refurbish this chair I just wanted to make it look cute and I'm going to keep this chair I, I had thought I was going to put it in my craft booth but when I finished it I decided that I'm going to keep it so I'm just giving you a good look at what it looked like before and I'm going to take it in I'm going to sand it down I'm going to get my orbital sander and I'm going to give it a good sand I didn't show this on camera because I'm doing it out on my craft cottage porch 
and it's hard to set up out there. Then I took some of the White Lightning by Dixie Belle and I gave it a good wipe down out here on the porch. Then I took this Wood Filler by Ace in the natural wood color and I'm gonna try my best to fill in some of those gaps so that I can sand it smooth and paint it. It's exactly what I did. It's not perfect, but this is an old piece. So this is what it looked like when I finished with the fill filler. Okay, so by now it's dark outside, so you know, I can't work outside. So I brought it in to the craft college and I'm just doing some sanding with a sanding block and getting all that nice and smooth. And I'm just gonna use this microfiber rag and some more of that white lightning. And I'm gonna, going to wipe it all down to get all of that dust off and any grime, any nasties. Just wipe it down really good. I'm telling you, I was in love with this chair. It's, a, it's an awesome piece. Now I'm taking this DIY I almost said wax because I'm always using the DIY wax. Um, yes, I am in my pajamas because this is late night creations. <laughs> so I'm taking this. It's black velvet by DIY paint and it is not black. Just for the record, it turns out a really beautiful charcoal gray. When you use the wax on it, it may get darker. I did use it on some bar stools um, last year earlier in the year and it did darken a little bit when I used the wax on it but it's they are still not black they are still just charcoal so here you go see it's the same color as my porch it's gray it's charcoal so anyway it's a beautiful color but that's not the end of it now I'm gonna give it a good coat of white no nope, I'm gonna sand it first I just sanded it a little bit smooth. Not smooth, I just sanded it a little bit. I don't know why I decided I was gonna sand it a little bit, but I did. Okay, then I wiped it down good with a damp cloth. I'm showing you all the steps. Okay, so here we go. I'm giving it a good coat with a chippy brush. I'm using a chippy brush and I'm just giving it a good coat. I'm not trying for full coverage on this and you will see the outcome when I'm finished how beautiful it turns out because that chippy brush doesn't I don't know how to explain it but some of that gray shows through and then some of the places where that was rough you can see there on that right side where it was rough that gray shows through and I I love that I love how that looks so that's what I did on this, on this uh, white coat. I love painting small pieces of furniture with chalk paint. It is so easy. But however, I did my entire piano with chalk paint. I did it in a gray. It is absolutely beautiful. And it worked out really good. So chalk paint is, is good to work on furniture. And this, this is working out great on this piece. So here I've got it all painted how I want it. I've got this 60 grit sanding block and I'm just gonna rough up some places. Some places I just went down to the gray and some places I went all the way to the wood. And I really wanted it to be black so that you could see a little black through there so you could see um, all the way to the wood, but it's not, it's charcoal instead of black, but it works out just fine. Then I'm wiping off all that dust again with a, a rag. Now I have another one of these rub-on transfers. This little candy cane is so cute. I love it. And like it just went on like a charm. I mean, it just went on so easy. And then I just put a little twine, wrap some twine around the top of that and put a little bow on it. Here it is back out on the porch. The lighting was so good out here. It was so nice and sunny. So. Uh, that's why I did all the pictures out there. And I absolutely love how this chair turned out. I also took it inside the house and took some pictures of it in the house. There's my piano that I was talking about that I painted. <laughs> um, 
over on the right. Let me know what you think about this. first Christmas chair. DIY is made with some scrap wood from my shop. And I had gotten a bunch, I mean a bunch of spindles. You're going to see some upcoming projects that I did with these spindles. They were uh, spindles that would be used to make a banister or a railing. And so I cut them up to use the pretty spindly part. And these blocks were the top and the bottom part of that um, if you can imagine that as the spindle so I just painted them with that cream colored paint I don't even remember which paint it was but you know whatever color you like and I'm just gonna sand around the edges to distress it just a little bit then I'm gonna glue them all together and then I just cut them the lengths I wanted I'm using some wood glue for a long-lasting hold but that, um, what am I using, hot glue, is going to give it a quick hold until the wood glue dries. Then I don't have to clamp it or anything like that. Now, it's all smooth. I've wiped it off. And I'm going to use this rub-on transfer that I ordered on Amazon. And if I can find the link to it, I will leave it linked in the description box below. It was very affordable. I just told you a big fat story. I got this on Etsy. I will see if I can link her website. It was very fast shipping and very reasonably priced. Um, yes, and they're beautiful. They work really good. You can see how easy that was. Look how beautiful that is. Now I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna just put a little bit of twine around the top. I got this red twine back at 4th of July when I was doing a lot of patriotic stuff. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of natural jute twine and just tie it in a little knot around the top and call this one finished. Now another DIY I do in this video, I'm using these same little blocks, um, but I use a different transfer on it. I'm going to just show you a quick version of that one too, but it's the same process as this one. I think this is a cute little shelf center, sitter, self, shelf sitter. That's a tongue twister. Anyway, I think it's really cute. Okay, how about this next DIY? Everybody loves a good book stack, right? So I picked these up, three of them at Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to rip the covers off. And I love the way that it gives me that, uh, on the binding, it gives you that kind of antique -y, um, rough look so I've done that to all three of these books now and I took my 220 grit sanding block and very lightly I'm not pressing very hard when I do this but I just want to get all those little rough edges off and just make it smooth um, and didn't want to do it too much or you'll get all that glue off and then you won't have your pages stuck together Okay, dust it off, and then now I have this beautiful scrapbook paper I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I've had it for quite a while, but they have a lot of music scrapbook paper there, or Michael's, or Joann's, wherever you can get scrapbook paper. And then you see over to the right, I picked a coordinating Christmas color one that I liked together. You pick whatever you like. This is just the particular one that I was doing today. So I measured it to fit the size of the book and now I'm cutting it with my paper cutter because I don't always cut really nice and straight. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of this cream colored paint. This is a chalk paint I got off the Starcraft, it's Brilliant Vinyl website, but it's Starcraft paint. Um, and it's just okay. I probably will not order this again, but I will use it up. I just wanted to make it kind of match the paper a little bit more. Now I'm going to put a nice coat of Mod Podge on the top of the book stack and the bottom of the book stack. So the top book and the bottom book, the underside. And I'm just going, then I'm going to let it dry completely. This is the most amazing way to you see what I did there? So I did on the bottom side. This is the most amazing way to use Mod Podge. I don't even remember the first person that I saw do this, but I've seen a lot of people do it. A lot of the people that I watch 
their channels do DIYs and crafting and it is a game changer. So you can use your regular iron with no steam. No steam, please. Um, I'm just going to get your paper all wet and sticky. Um, I just have this little press. And you just press it down. Now, I did not use any uh, parchment paper with this because this paper is a little bit thicker. It's, it's not really as thick as cardstock, but it's thicker than just regular, you know, printed paper. So it worked really good. Now, I'm going to press it down really good so that the pages don't bow because sometimes when you put that heat on there they'll kind of bow up a little bit so I just press it on there it doesn't take very much heat to reactivate that glue and there is no wrinkling at all and you can see that it looks beautiful then I'm going to just put a little oh no I'm not uh, I'm just telling all kinds of stories tonight. Well, I'm doing this voiceover at night. I mostly always do my voiceovers at night, just in case you wonder. Okay, so I did this piece on earth on my Cricut. You could use stickers from the Dollar Tree would work amazing. I did not have stickers from Dollar Tree. You could handwrite it if you like your handwriting. And you can put whatever words you want to. I wanted to put peace on earth. Um, you could put whatever. I don't know. Silent night. You could put merry and bright. Merry Christmas. You can put whatever you want. I'm just going to put four little dots of hot glue on each corner and press it together. That way if anybody ever really wanted to read this book, they still could. I didn't ruin any of the pages that um, pertain to the story. Now, here's this jute again. I have it in red and green. This The green actually came from Dollar Tree in the gardening section in the spring. And the red came off Amazon. And I just tied a loopy bow around it. And then I picked up these little wooden angels. They have like little paper wings. And I decided she was too clean and too pretty for this project. Now... We really don't want to dirty up the angel, but I just thought it looked better. So I just took the antique wax and just kind of dry brushed it on there a little bit. And I just think it made it, you know, it just kind of went with the decor a little bit better. Just It just looks a little worn and distressed, I guess. A little older. And I think this turned out so cute. It is so much cuter in person than it is in the pictures. Sometimes I just can't capture the pictures capture the beauty in the pictures okay next DIY it's the same as the first one pretty much except it's only three blocks of wood and I painted it white with some white chalk paint and now I'm taking some black chalk paint this one is by folk art and it's ink the color ink and I'm just you know barely putting any uh, paint on my paint brush and I'm just doing it around the edges because I like that look same process with the wood glue and the hot glue and just gluing these three blocks together and then oh, I guess I'm gonna show you the whole process I thought since I showed you the whole process on the first DIY I wouldn't have to show you this but apparently I thought you needed to see it again just in case you were kind of slow like me and you needed it okay oh maybe I left that in because I picked that up where I had done my dry brushing and smeared some paint on the back. So I just decided to go ahead and make it look like I did that intentionally. Okay, here's another one of those rub-on transfers in that same pack that I got. Or it might have been a different pack. I bought two packs from her. They were, I want to say they were $12 a pack. And I got them, I ordered them, and I had them in like three days. So she does really fast shipping. I'm going to see if I can, I don't know if I'll be able, maybe I can go to recent pur purchases, I'm sure. And I'll see if I can link her website or somehow link. I've never linked something from Etsy, but I'll see if I can link that in the description box below in case you want these exact same rub-on transfers. Okay. The next one is these little wooden dice that I searched all over the country for. Could not find them. Finally found them and bought all that Dollar Tree had. So I just painted them with that same white 
chalk paint by uh, Rust-Oleum. And then I'm just going to do that little black um, distressing around there. So I did it a little bit, you know, heavier just on some of the corners there. And then I'm going to really wipe a lot of paint off my brush and give it a little more dry brushing on the corner, rounded corners. I don't know. You can see what I'm doing. I don't even know how to explain that. And then you just make it your own. You do what you want to do. These vid this video is just for inspiration. And I did these letters on my Cricut. Again, you can get great stickers um, at Dollar Tree or um, Hobby Lobby has them on 50 per 40 or 50 percent off almost all the time. You can hand write them. J O Y would be very easy letters to hand write. I just wanted to do th this with my Cricut. And I just um, glued these three little blocks together with some wood glue and some hot glue. Same song, second verse, same as the first. However that saying goes, I don't even know. I just make up my own, my own words. Okay, so J-O-Y. And I don't know why this is... Taking me so long to show you this. Then I just took some red and white baker's twine and made a tiny little bow to go right up on top because I wanted this to be simple. This would be so cute on a tiered tray or just add it to a little vignette of some type to just add another little dimension. It can sit on top of something else or stand alone or it's just super cute. I think it turned out really cute have to let me know what you think about this one be so easy to recreate see there it goes with that one really cute so I had these two trucks left over from my fall in my fall stash and I knew I could cut those pumpkins off that truck because I've done that before I purchased these from Dollar Tree online and I had ended up with 12 of them and I have had them for a couple years and so I've used them for a lot of different holidays as well. So I knew I could cut those pumpkins off. So now I wanted to put a couple of trees in the back of the truck. So instead of trying to cut these wooden ones and cut that star off and all that, I just got my handy dandy cardboard out. And this is the cardboard that comes in the Dollar Tree, Chris, um, the Dollar Tree calendars. And you can use any kind of little cardboard. I think the thinner cardboard is better because you don't have all that corrugated edge showing through and you can paint on this and it doesn't warp too bad. I don't use a lot of the paint to make it really wet. Anyway, I just cut this out and I did it twice because I have two trucks. And I just took some little scissors and did it and then I placed it to see kind of how I wanted to have it where they needed to be filled up that those little holes in the Christmas trees and on the truck I normally put a little piece of tape on the back to keep the spackling from going all the way through this time I just kind of used my finger to keep it from going through and it worked just fine now I'm gonna paint with this um, this is one hour enamel by wise owl and I cannot remember the name of this. It's green. How about that? <laughs> and I am just going to paint it. And then I do go in. I don't think I recorded that I went in with a little bit of white and made some little branches on it. Just swooshed and made little branches. Um, but I don't think I showed that. I don't, I don't think I caught that on video. I don't think I didn't turn my camera on. And then... I did all I did these little trees from Dollar Tree I did the same thing I did them front and back because sometimes on the banner you never know if you're going to um, see the back side so I finished both of them now this is some of that gold rub I can't remember what it's called metallic I'm gonna link this I got this on Amazon I'll link it in the description box um, so you can kind of see where I did the try to do those branches. I didn't think it was enough. So I'm going to go ahead and dry brush some white 
to kind of make it look a little bit flocked and or maybe a little bit of snow on all of them I did I did them all that way now I have this mmm maybe barn red by Dixie Bell this is Dixie Bell paint I love it I absolutely love their paint so if you're looking for some good chalk paint I would highly recommend investing in it it goes a long way it doesn't dry out super fast in the jar um, I, d I really do like it and then I'm gonna take the antique wax and use it kind of as a stain but kind of just paint it on and do the little truck the little wooden railings on the truck and yep that's what I did with that and I'm pretty sure I probably took a little cloth and just buffed over it with that I use a I use an old white t-shirt so if you use a colored t-shirt sometimes the color of the t-shirt will go ahead and rub on on what you're doing but um, I just use a white one and I will buff out a lot of my painted projects now, I'm using an angled brush here I think I was trying to show you that a, a second ago because it makes it easy to get up close to those edges so I'm just doing those tires black and I probably shouldn't have gone all the way up to the fender wheel but I did and then this is not a realistic truck this is definitely whimsical and then I'm just gonna do the center the hubcaps I'm gonna just do them gray and I thought about trying to make them um, look a little bit like hammered metal or just put some dimension to them but this truck is not gonna be real dimensional it's just gonna be kind of plain then I decided in case the back showed, I didn't want it to be so um, unfinished, but I didn't really want to paint it either, so I just put some of that antique wax on the back. Now, this is where I take that that little piece of t-shirt, that little scrap of t-shirt, and I'm just rubbing it. And I rub it pretty good. I mean, I don't like press down super hard, but I give it a good buff. I mean, I buff it pretty good. And it makes that surface nice and smooth because I, I mean you could you could definitely wax it or mod podge it and then I have love these paint markers by I'm not sure how to say it Posca but they're they work really nice and I just kind of put some little accents you know wherever you want to put them okay here we go with this canvas drop cloth I mean I bought a, like a four foot by five foot one a long time ago and I have just been using it and using it and using it and it's a really good buy and I usually have one I usually have that linked in my description box as well so I just cut some little half inch strips and then I cut some strips of that red um, jute that I got off Amazon and then I cut some green I cut them all the same length and you're gonna see what we're gonna do with those then I take my drill I get a drill bit that is going to be about the same size as the jute so the jute will go through the hole so we're going to drill holes in the truck and the trees now i'm going to put this tape back here because this these little dollar tree this dollar tree wood is so thin and it splinters really bad it still does a little bit with the tape on but not nearly as bad so that's just a little hack for you so I'm going to put a hole on one each end of the truck and one on each side of these little trees so we can have our little banner. So I'm just cutting off all that little fur that sticks off the sides. I know it's not fur, but that's what I that's what I call it. Just in and out, in and out. I'm putting two trees, a truck, a tree in the middle and then two trees on the other end. And I don't know if I show you this whole thing or not, but I'm pretty sure that you're smart enough to figure out how to string it all up. But yeah, I just, you know, that's the glory of it. You can just keep moving it down, moving it down till you get it where you want it. I 
just love these little banners. I love, I wish I had a fireplace. I do not have a fireplace, but, and I really don't have anywhere to hang these. Sometimes I'll hang them in my entryway above my little table in my entryway. And I just cut it so I'll have a little bit of tail. And then, just like my fall one, I'm going to just make some little strings to hang down. So, I mean, you do you. Like, I wanted to do some fabric, but I didn't really have any cute Christmas fabric. So I took two strands of that red and two strands of the green and I'm going to put one piece of that canvas drop cloth and I'm going to do that in between each tree and each truck. And then on each end I'm taking, I think I took six strands of that um, drop cloth and then a little piece of twine or I think that's cotton twine and wrap it around there you can see what i'm doing to make kind of a little tassel on the end i think this looks really cute i did that on the fall one and i really fell in love with the look of that little tassel then i kind of measured roughly measured them i did mine five inches i roughly measured all of them and, and trimmed them up all about the same length now it's time to put our christmas trees in the back of our truck so I just put that inside there, put a little line so I could tell where to put my glue. Then I decided mm, I probably better look at that and do that one so it's like less work. Then I just put some hot glue on there and put my trees in the back of my truck so we could take them home. And I don't know why we went, well, you know, some of us like to have Christmas trees in different rooms of the house. So maybe this family needed two trees. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and hit that bell so you'll get notified. Remember, be still and know that he is God. So the first DIY that I'm doing, I picked up this little um, decor piece from Dollar Tree and it's cute, but I had a great idea for it. So I'm gonna take this little hinge off and save all the pieces because I'm gonna put it back on later. So I'm giving both of these pieces some black ink chalk paint by Waverly giving it a coat on the sides and the back and yeah don't forget to hit that thumbs up button because you know that really helps my channel so the sides and the back of these are getting all a good solid coat and also please don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed Okay, so this is all done, let it dry, then I'm gonna put Mod Podge all over the front of both of these. Really nice thick coat, and as smooth as I can get it. And then I'm gonna let it dry completely. And I, I started doing this before I hit record. I realized I hadn't hit record, so I stopped. So now I'm gonna just use my little, my little heat press, my little iron. You can use any iron without steam, and press it down and it reactivates that glue, that Mod Podge, and it sticks on there really good. So I'm just, the other one I just used some black fabric, scrap fabric I had, and this is, guess what? It's that canvas drop cloth. So I think my iron had turned itself off and so I had to turn it back on to get it to go good. Okay, so I took another little piece of this canvas drop cloth and I cut it a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller than the big side of this piece and frayed the edges. And now I'm using a decal that I made with some iron-on vinyl on my Cricut. And this, I think, actually was in design space. And I'm just going to press it down on that drop cloth canvas drop cloth and I think I already put the drop cloth I think I already pressed it onto that piece as well and then I have this little star in my stash I bought these years ago and I've been using them and using them and they I just they just keep lasting and I'm gonna glue it over the top of this little chimney because I don't really want there to be a chimney on my stable okay so now I made this on the Cricut as well and I'm just gonna iron it on, lots of ironing on. But it's so easy. This was this was a really easy DIY. 
Okay, so I'm ironing that on, and then I'm going to also, I don't know if I ironed this down, I can't even remember. Nope, used my tacky glue. Love this um, Aline's Tacky Glue. It works really good, especially on fabric. It works really, really good on fabric. So I'm just going to use a paintbrush to smooth it out so that it does. it's not real clumpy. And make sure that I get plenty on there. And then I'm just going to center it in the middle of this and press it down nice and firmly and smooth it out. And ta-da! There they are. And I'm going to reassemble. And I did off-camera poke holes through the fabric before I put the screws in. So I put all four screws in there. And here it is. Finished product. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. It's going to be a framed art piece. I covered this piece of cardboard with some black fabric and it's going to fit inside the frame. And I have some more of that canvas drop cloth. Surprise, surprise. And I frayed the edges and I'm going to iron this little piece to try and make it fit in, uh, to make it smooth. Sorry. And then I'm going to use a stencil that I got from Chalk Couture and I did not get on film me making this. I apologize. But it came out so good with so much detail. These stencils are amazing. It was my first time using one and I loved it. Now I'm going to do this Mod Podge around the edge like I did in a previous uh, DIY. And I'm putting it on pretty thick and I do it all around all four edges. I don't show it to you because that would be boring. And then I take my little heat press. You can use any kind of iron with no steam. And I just press it. Now this um, canvas is a little thicker than most of the materials I usually do this with. So I just took my time. This is sped up. But I took my time and I just held it on there until it was all nice and smooth. Now let's go to the frame. I took some DIY dark wax. And I'm just going to put some of it on there to I don't know I just wanted it to look different than it was a friend of mine gave me this frame it was in her barn and she had a couple frames in there and she was moving and she was getting rid of a bunch of things and so she gave that to me gave this to me and now I'm going to take some white wax by DIY wax Debbie's I can't even remember what it's called Debbie's DIY wax I always just call it by DIY so I did that white on there. Just put as much or as little as you want. Now I'm putting it in the frame. So I'm seeing, putting it, making sure that I have the top on the top and, you know, all that good stuff. And then I just press that cardboard down in there. And then I'm going to take my little staple gun and I'm making sure that I catch the cardboard edge and the wood edge. And here is the final result. This is probably my favorite one in this video. Let me know what you think about this. Okay, for this next DIY, I picked this little piece up at the thrift store or the Goodwill, I don't know, for 95 cents. Can you believe that? And it came packaged like this, and it had a little star with it. I'm not real sure what you're supposed to do with this star, but I'm going to show you what I do with it. So I give this thing a coat, this thing, I give this decor piece <laughs> a coat of white chalk paint front back sides the entire thing gets white all over it and one coat I just did one coat one coat covered it good and it was it was good enough and then I had that little star I gave it a coat of yellow I don't remember what this color of this yellow was but it's just a yellow that I liked now I'm taking the fawn by Waverly and it is a great distressing color and so I'm using this chippy brush and I'm just doing a heavy dry brush over it. I'm just using that chippy brush and just, I don't know, I love the way this turned out. So let me know in the comments if you like the way this manger turned out. I love the way it turned out. And I also did a little bit of this distressing with the fawn on the star. I don't know if I show that on camera or not. Yes, there it is. So I distressed it a little bit. Or just, you know, added some dimension to it. And then I'm going to paint the swaddling clothes, the swaddling cloths. I'm going to just paint it gray. And I'm not trying to get perfect coverage. I don't care if a little bit of that white shows through. Because I'm really just, I want it to be kind of white, but not really white. 
Um, and then I'm going to use, I think this is desert sand, or I'm not sure what this is. But I'm just going to paint Jesus' little head with that. And then my chocolate sprinkle paint that I love to use. I'm going to just dry brush a little bit around the edges. And then just a little bit in the middle. And here I'm just going to take that white chalk paint and I'm going to dry, do a heavy dry brush on the swaddling cloths and a little bit on his head and then a little bit on the star. And then I'm going to put a little twine bow on the star and then I'm going to glue the star on the manger. Actually, on baby Jesus. I got a little too much glue. I didn't want it oozing out, and it oozed out anyway, so I just took my scissors and kind of scraped it off a little bit. And then I have this beautiful pit berry garland that I got from Dollar Tree. If you haven't bought those, I hope your Dollar Tree has them because they are really pretty. They have them at Hobby Lobby too, I think I heard somebody say, but these are really pretty. You have to be careful. Sometimes the pit berries fall off, but I've not really had that, had that happen very often. And so I'm just going to twist it together back here. I think I did hot glue a little bit on the side to keep it from sliding down. But look how sweet this is. I love this one. Okay, so my next DIY is another framed piece with frame that was given to me. Um, I have a piece of foam board and some black fabric, some more of that black fabric, which was also given to me. And I made this on my Cricut. Now that didn't fit, so I'm just showing you that you can trim your images really close to the vinyl to make it fit. I could have pressed that down and then pressed the other one down, but this is how I chose to do it. I'm using, I could have gotten out my, my big heat press, but I just love this little one. It gets super hot, and for small projects like this, I just love to use it for this. So it didn't take very long um, to get this ironed on. And it turned out really, really good. So just peel that back. And it looks so pretty. I love the black and white contrast on this too. So I'm going to take the Aline's Tacky Glue again. And just going to glue that down. I had that black fabric tucked underneath. So I could see the, the, where I needed to place it for placement. And now I'm just lifting a little bit at a time. So I don't move it too much. I'm going to put the Ellings glue and just smooth it down. I'm doing that on all four sides. Then take my little rotary cutter and then cut off all the excess fabric. You could do it with an X-Acto knife. You could do it with a pair of scissors. I just love this little rotary tool. Now I'm going to put glue. I just did it in all four corners. You could do it all the way around if you want. And I'm going to glue this down. And then I'm going, I decided it needed some ribbon. So I had this buffalo check ribbon, and I'm not real sure where I got this. I get a lot of this stuff like after the season at Christmas and what have you, so I don't pay full price for anything, guys. And so I just glue that there and just kind of making somewhat of a little swag with that. And then I made this little bow. I made two bows, actually. I made three bows, actually. I'm trying to decide between these two bows. I kind of wish I would have gone with the bigger one after I finished it, but the small one's okay because I put that greenery around it. And so I just glue the bow down, and then I'm just going to speed it up real fast that I poked all these little pieces of greenery around that bow. And, you know, I'm not the best with florals or greenery or arranging, so I just kind of do it however I like it. So you do it however you like it. You know, we say you do you. You do you, boo. Okay, so I really should have, and I may go back and put some of those red berries. I just recently put some of those big red berries in a snow globe that I did in my last video. And I, I think I should have put some of those maybe in the middle or somewhere. Because that red would have really popped on this. But I really was trying to keep it with that black and white theme. Um, so yes, this frame and the, and the foam board and the fabric were all given to me, donated to me. So here's the final result. I love that it says glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men that the angels said to the shepherds when they came to announce the birth of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Okay, we're going to start out with this piece of scrap wood, some DIY paint, and this brush. This DIY paint is black velvet. And this scrap wood I picked up out of a dumpster behind a cabinet shop. It's an awesome piece of wood. It has some character to it. It had some gouges. You see this little gouge in it? Um, I don't mind this because it's on the edge. It's pretty deep. So these on the uh, flat side were pretty deep like that too. So I just took some wood filler and filled them in. They're not completely flush, but I'm okay with that. I sanded it down. I sanded all the edges nice and smooth so that I would have a nice smooth surface to paint. That cracked side is going to be the back. So we're not even going to worry about that. I'm going to give it one good coat. The sides and the ends, the edges, the back the front all of it just one good coat of this DIY paint because it's black and this is such a nice smooth surface it's gonna cover really nice so now I'm gonna take the I'm gonna show you the difference in the DIY white wax which I absolutely love but it, it has different purposes than doing a dry brush with white paint I'm, I'm doing this almost in a dry brush method I'm using the brush that I use to dry brush. It's just a scrappy old chippy kind of brush. And I'm, I'm trying to do the dry brush method, but the wax, you cannot do that with it. And it it's very translucent, and so it's more of a wax. But I do love this look. And so when you rub it in, it softens the, that black color, almost makes it a white. Now I'm gonna do a little dry brushing on top of that with my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and I really actually love how this turned out now the other side when I flip it over I'm gonna start with my black and I'm just gonna do um, the white dry brushing on it and this is really the look I was going for because you see that black shining through and it's a total black and white and then I don't have to rub it in I don't have to you know do any of that so I did that on the edges I'm showing you the difference how it looks more frosted, how it looks, you see more contrast. So that's the side, that's the look I like. Okay, so I'm not real sure which side I use. Now here's the clear wax by DIY. I'm gonna put a little bit on my uh, little scrap of a white undershirt. And when my husband gets through with them, I just cut them up in little scraps and use them um, in my craft room. Craft cottage, I have craft cottage now. Um, such a blessing. And now I'm taking this, um, ribbon I had in my stash from last year um, from my decor and I'm just cutting one strip that well I wrapped it around the piece of wood like a present and then I cut a long strip and then I cut some I just made some loops and then now I'm gonna take a piece of twine and wrap around the center to tie it off to make a bow simple I'm kind of making it sound difficult but it's not difficult at all and then just do a little fluffing and I edit out all the fluffing because I can fluff for days. It's just like when I do hair, I will just pick and poke and all day long if I could. But fortunately, the appointment time is over and you get to go home because otherwise we would be there all day. I'll just pick and poke and pick and spray and yeah. So then I take these little pieces of greenery in my stash. They're just little pieces that came off of a garland. And you see that little white tassel? I thought I was going to use that on there because I think tassels scream farmhouse. But I didn't like how it looked. I don't, it, maybe it was too big. I'm not sure. So then I have this little garland. Well, it's not really a garland. I'm, I'm pretending like it's a garland, but it's gift wrap. I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance after the season for like nearly nothing, maybe like a dollar or so. And I'm just going to use a little piece of it. I'm going to use a little piece of this red twine first to put through this little jingle bell. I bought a bunch of these jingle bells one year after clearance. I don't know if it was Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I hit them all after after the season for clearance. And I don't like 50% off because they put stuff 50% off during the season. So I wait till it's like 70 and 90. Now you don't get as great a selection when you wait that long, but I like to get it when it's like a dollar or $1.50 and you get a pack of those 
six or eight of those bells. So it makes those little bells just, you know, 10 or 15 cents. So anyway, I have, still have a few of those little bells in my stash. I've probably had them for two or three years. So I thought it would be perfect for this. And I'm trying to figure out how to make all these little snowflakes and, and beads be on the ends of my bow. And I just wrapped it around my fingers and worked it until... Yeah, I, and I don't think I showed you this whole process. Anyway, just make a bow out of whatever you have. It's not likely that you're going to have this because I've had it a couple years. And just whatever you have that you like. You could use any kind of ribbon, any kind of twine. I almost just did it out of some red and um, just regular twine. And then I found this in my stash. I have a tote that I just add to every year of my leftovers. And so I actually have two totes now. So I'm trying to craft up my stash this year and get rid of some of that stuff. So i um, just going to make a little bow and stick it in the center of the big bow. Glue that down. Well, I haven't even glued my greenery down yet. You're going to see me glue that down. Did I glue it down? Or maybe I did glue it down. Maybe I already did glue it down. I got too busy talking about buying stuff on clearance and forgot to watch what I was doing. Okay, so anyway, this cute little bell with these little snowflakes and beads dangling off. I think that is so cute. Anyway, I'm going to glue that to the center. Yes, I already glued my greenery down. Okay, I remember gluing it down now. Okay, struggle. So I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. Now this is cutting it pretty close because it cost me $4.49, but totally worth it because it's super cute. Now I'm using that black chalk paint again from DIY, Debbie's Design Diary. Um, I really like this. It's more of a charcoal, dark charcoal, um, black when it dries, but I really do like it. Now, I'm gonna warn you that this DIY, mm, let me just give you a little tip on here. Okay, so I painted black. I wasn't looking for full coverage on the black. Did a little bit of black on the sides because I want to do it black and then I want to give it a coat of white. Or maybe did I did a coat and a half, you know, of white, a coat and then touched up. Okay, there they are. See how it's more like a charcoal, dark charcoal? And I'm going to make it two-sided. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm making it two-sided. So I'm doing the back white. I'm just flip-flopping all over the place with this. I did two coats of white on the back. Okay. Now, I flipped it back over. I did two coats of white on the, on the over the black. This is over the black. This is not the white side. Oh, brother. I hope you're following me. So now I have that black velvet again. And I'm going to stencil. I made stencils with my Cricut. Now, sometimes I use these little sponge brushes. I get them wherever. You can buy them anywhere everywhere or sometimes I use sponges and you can cut them to make them smaller for smaller places but I'm gonna cut that little pointy tip off of this little small brush so I have a flat surface so I can pounce it now what I'm gonna tell you the tip is which I learned from my crafting friends in this five under five challenge group is wait overnight before you put your stencil vinyl on I thought it was dry. I used my heat gun. I waited an hour while I did another project, worked on something else. But just let your paint dry overnight, especially because I had a good two coats of paint on here. I had my black coat, I had my white coat, okay? This is why, friends, this is why. Do you see this? Okay, now I was going to distress it and I'm thinking, okay, no problem. That's okay. We can handle that. I'm going to distress it anyway. I'm going to give it a farmhouse look. I was going to distress it, but oh, every letter just got better. Okay, I want to distress it where I want to distress it, not where the stencil want to distress it. So I went in and I added some white paint. You can see where I added my white paint because I had layers of paint that peeled off. But I'm going to take these little sanding blocks I get on Amazon. I'll link them below. And I use these different grits, 120, 80. I started with, well, I don't even know what I'm showing you I did, but I ended up with 80, a little bit, and 120, 120. And then I finished off with the 220 to make it smooth. So, I mean, I just got in there and I got after it. 
and I thought, you know, I'm just going to make them look old and chippy and worn out because they already look messed up. So then I go back in with the 220 to kind of smooth it. The thing that I did not like about it was it kind of they kind of turned gray because as I'm sanding it it kind of turned them gray. Okay, now I flipped it over to the white side. And I cut out these words on my Cricut. Love, joy, peace, and faith. I thought those were nice little Christmas words. And so that makes this little hanging sign reversible. So there's our, <laughs> our very distressed Noel and our love, joy, peace. All right, let me know what you think about that. Would you hang that up or would you just have trashed it and started over? Okay, we're going to start out with these little thin wood rounds that I get at off Amazon. I'll link those below too. Some sandpaper. I sanded it down because sometimes they have some little snaggy pieces. And I'm going to paint it with some chalkboard paint that I get at Dollar Tree. Got this at Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of going to paint the whole entire thing. Sometimes, if you want this a little thicker, you can glue a couple of them together. I have done that in the past. This is a 12-inch round one. I have purchased the 14-inch round ones, and they are a good buy if you search for a good buy on Amazon. Now, I'm going to put some Mod Podge. You see that I used my paper to guide how much I wanted uh, to cover there, and I'm just going to apply a healthy amount of Mod Podge. Now, this little brush that I'm using, I found in my stash when I moved to the craft cottage. It came with some Mod Podge when I bought it one time. Now I'm going to put that beautiful scrapbook paper on there. I love it. And I'm going to use my little heat press. You can use an iron with no steam. That Mod Podge was completely dry. It was not tacky. It was not sticky. It was completely dry. This little iron is going to reactivate that glue as it gets hot. Now I did use this parchment paper. Not, not wax paper. I don't know if wax paper works or not. When you heat it up, I don't know what happens to the wax. But I did use parchment paper and ironed it down really good all over. And it works amazing. No wrinkles, no bubbles. It's nice and flat. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and cut around the edge of this. You can go back with sandpaper after and smooth it down if you feel that that's necessary. The X-Acto knife gives it a nice, smooth, clean edge. Love it. Okay. Cut this out on my Cricut. I found this in uh, Design Space. Um, I actually made the little um, opening to write the number in. I designed that myself in Cricut Design Space, but I got the days until Christmas um, in the images that I have with my subscription. Now, I am thinking that I'm going to season this, which was probably a bad idea. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but for some reason, the... Um, this particular chalk paint or this particular wood round kind of looks a little funky. But I'm going to Mod Podge the paper, just the paper, so that it seals it. So when dust bunnies get on it, you can wipe it clean. Maybe you don't have dust bunnies in your house, but I do in my house. I live in the country and we have plenty of them. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this um, DIY clear wax, put it on my little, um, I started to say handkerchief. It is not a handkerchief. It is a little scrap of a white undershirt t-shirt. And I'm just going to go all around this, not hitting the place where we're going to write the numbers. And when this video airs, it is 81 days till Christmas, friends. I'm going to use the Aileen's, Aileen's Tacky Glue. Make a bead of glue across that. It didn't. It, it looked fine like it was, but, you know, we got to add a little extra. I love this little Baker's Twine I got after Christmas on clearance. I think this one came from Walmart. You can find them a little skinnier version of it at Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to make the hanger out of that. And I just flip it over, and because I may resell this, I'm trying to finish out the back a little nicer. And I just flip it over, hot glue it down, use my little scraps of canvas drop cloth to 
reinforce it a little bit better so that it will hold a little better. Doesn't take very much. I'm trying to decide how much of it do I want on there. It just needs to have a little extra hold on there just so it doesn't come off. Because you never know, hot glue's good, but sometimes it's good when it's good and it's not good when it's not. Oh, that was profound. Okay, so I'm gonna snip those little ends off. I'm putting the teeniest, tiniest little piece of hot glue on there and just rubbing it in there so that that will not fray and it'll just kind of hold, hold that down. You can kind of see that. There's really not much hot glue on there. Okay, and this DIY is done. I think it turned out really adorable. Let me know what you think about this one. You could, you could stand it up or hang it. All right, here's our next farmhouse Christmas DIY. This little wood sign I got from Dollar Tree, and it came in the nautical section. And I have some more of this canvas drop cloth. It goes on and on and on. It's the gift that never stops giving. It lasts forever. I've made tons of projects with it very well worth the money spent. So I'm going to lay it down in here. It's very um, forgiving, like it's a little bit stretchy. And so I'm just laying it in there, holding it down with my hand, using my pencil to draw a line where I want to cut. And then I just cut on those lines. Cut it out because we are going to Mod Podge it into that center. This is probably my favorite DIY of this um, video and this was Pinterest inspired. I, I'm not really a Pinterest go-to girl. I'm a Google girl but a lot of the images off Pinterest show up on Google. So I will link this website where this came from in the description box below because I like to give credit where credit is due. So she did hers on reverse canvas and did it in a little bit different frame and hers looks a little different than mine, but um, I would like to give credit for my inspiration. Mine was a little bit short on the edges, but I'm telling you, you can stretch it out a little bit and it turned out great. Okay, Sawmill Gravy by Dixie Bell. So this was my first time using Dixie Bell paint. Not my first time, but this is my first batch of Dixie Bell paint. I will definitely um, be getting some more of this from my new friend that I met at the antique mall um, here locally. I love when I can get it local and don't have to pay for shipping. Okay, Dark Wax by DIY. This stuff is great. So I'm gonna dry brush this. Do Use a dry brush method, sort of dry brush it just around the edges to give it that little bit of aged look. Just kind of on the edges where it would look like it was a little dirty or worn and you know do as much or as little as you like some people like a lot of it I still like to be able to see that original color through there and then I'm gonna do a little bit on that on that canvas too now I'm using it on these little tiny wooden stars that I got in a huge package at I want to say Walmart during the holidays and then I'm gonna dry brush that white over it. I did some pumpkins in a previous video with this method and it might be my new favorite method to stain it and then dry brush over. I don't know, I'm just loving this look right now. Okay, Spanish moss. You can get it at Dollar Tree, you can get it at Walmart, any hobby store. Now I'm making a mess with it. I'm telling you, I made a huge mess with this. Okay, I'm gonna hot glue, I'm gonna make a Christmas tree on here. And I'm going to just take it and shape it, use hot glue, shape it, and I'm warning you, you're going to burn your fingers if you're not careful. So I should have had those little silicone protectors on every finger. So yeah, instead of trying to pull it apart, I just cut it, I just wadded it up, shaped it with my fingers, and I kept thinking, this is not going to look like a Christmas tree. What am I doing? Why is mine not looking like the, the, picture, the, the inspiration picture? But then when I finished and I stepped away and looked, I was like, it looks like a Christmas tree. Yay. So anyway, just if you want to do this, it is so easy. I'm telling you, this is this is probably, I don't know, all of these DIYs were super easy except that Noel hanging thing that I should have, would have been easy if I would have just let it dry overnight. I'm telling you, learn from my mistakes. Okay, see, it's starting to look like a Christmas tree. I just keep shaping it and picking it and poking it. I'm telling you, I'm a picker and a poker. And for some reason, I didn't really show you that I glued those on there. I stuck some little um, of those glue sticky tabs in between to give it some dimension. 
Oh, and I put a cinnamon stick at the bottom for the trunk. I think this, this is my favorite. Okay, got this little chalkboard sign at Dollar Tree with a little buffalo check, and I'm not doing a whole lot to this. I thought I was gonna season this to make it look like a used chalkboard, but it didn't really season up good, which is fine. These little uh, metal words come from Dollar Tree. They come three in a pack, and they say joy, believe, and I'm not sure what the other one said. So I picked joy because it fit the best, actually. I had some red Grogane ribbon that I got, I don't know, Hobby Lobby on half price probably. I never buy, I never pay full price for ribbon at Hobby Lobby. You let me know. Do you wait till it goes on sale? If I check their ad and it's not on sale, I wait till the next week to get it. Like, I'm just that frugal. Using that little, I, this is the Baker's Twine that comes from, I'm pretty sure this came from Hobby Lobby. Not Hobby Lobby, I mean Dollar Tree. This is the skinnier. You see in the upper right hand corner, that's the one that, that came from Walmart at Christmas time last year. It came three in a pack, I believe. I think it came with red and black and tan. And so, now I'm using Fray Check. If you are not familiar with Fray Check, it is great to keep your things from fraying. And um, I'll link some of that. I'll see if I, I get that at um, Hobby Lobby or Joann's. But I'll see if I can link some Amazon if you like to shop Amazon. I'll link it down below. Um, I just think it's just easy sometimes to order from Amazon. Have them deliver it to your door. Our gas prices have gone down. Way, way, way down. Like a, over a dollar a gallon. So let me know if your gas prices have gone down where you live. Um, my electric bill went way down this month too. So that was that was nice. Of course, it's gotten a lot cooler. We're not in triple digits in Texas anymore. Okay, you can see what I'm doing. I'm making a hanger. I'm just going to tie a big fat knot um, in the end. And I kind of like that. Gives it that farmhouse look if you have the knot in the front. Um, and so, there's the hanger. This is it. That's it for this DIY. Let me know what you think. If you made it all the way to the end of this video... Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let me know in the comments below if you saw the DIYs the first time around or if this is your first time to see them. Be sure and give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe if you're not already subscribed because it helps me out a lot and it's completely free for you. But most of all, I want you to remember to be still and know that He is God.